car's window pane. Hello? Human fly here? Come on! I stayed up all night dying my underwear. Hey! So y'all didn't pick Slacker Cats? Man, I can't have shit about this bitch, yo. Oh man, how the mighty have fallen. TV footage? Y'all couldn't even pick nothing in widescreen? Why the hell did y'all vote for this nutty ball shit? What about that one? Yeah, that one doesn't come off. I tried. Pick something on Disney Plus next time, shit. Y'all don't want Quack Pack? <laughs> You know what? Never mind. I don't want Quack Pack. Fly me to the moon and let me... In 2005, as part of that slew of animated shows that Disney dropped back then that just kind of reminds you of that time period, <laughs> Disney released The Buzz on Maggie. <laughs> running for 11 months and 21 episodes is definitely one of Disney's shortest running original series. Which is sick because they played this shit so often you would have thought there was like 80 of them bitches. Y'all remember this mini game? Of course y'all do. Y'all won't shut the hell up about it. Love you. Personally, I think that it's fitting that I do this show. I've done videos on all the other shows from this era. Replacements, got this old ass Day of the Barbarian video revamp coming soon, don't worry. Brandy and Mr. Whiskers, Emperor's New School. Oh yeah, I guess I never did American Dragon, huh? It's been a long time coming. Pause. What the fuck? Besides, what kind of man would I be if I left the people hanging? Well, you'd be a black man. Wow! Wow! Whoa! What was that? And I didn't want to do it alone. Ariana, this way. When are you gonna clean that shit off the wall? And the last person that asked me that made it out of here with no spleen. Uh, I'm related though. Um, are you an organ donor? Ooh, can we do one of those Ed, Ed and Eddie title cards for this? Yes. This ain't televised, they telling lies, but promise I won't. We've been patronized, they taking lives, I'm on my way home. Relax my mind about half the time, I'm watching cartoons for knocks, how I'm rocking my home. Of course they resemble my skin, wanna watch too. Hypnotizing, Titanic, how I follow through the vibes. Okay. Dreaming mama's proud as if she looks through his penny size. On a man in the house like Oscar. We deceive, I believe he'd Oscar. James Earl, when I speak, I'm a foster. Got a swerve in the streets, never block the psycho. Feel more, just try to make you feel more. Through the halls, I felt scorns. Looking at me, cause I don't like what you like, you feel too. Should've smacked your lights, slick back, you ain't seen pimpin' before For the stars, I shoot pimpin', no boy, you best check the score I'm seven on Bella, my chick from Bella, my will from Yeah, I'm right there with you, fly friend Need to bring it home, fly friend Don't take this the wrong way, but I can't come over here Ever, again All this shit, baby, girl, so I got stains in my jaw This family's not about money, it's about all this Be an old friend, but you are my best friend. What the fuck? Kodak Black during a buzz on Maggie video? Isn't that so quirky, silly, random of me? <laughs> the buzz on Maggie is about Maggie Pesty, an early teens fly living in a town full of other insects called Sticky Feet. She has an older brother, a younger brother, a black best friend. What you say we pull out a little juice for our homie who didn't make it? Man. Oh, word? Very well, then. Here's your pass back to the plantation. <laughs> See y'all later. Aw, oh, man. The show chronicles Maggie's life as an average teenager, except, uh, she can fly, I guess, and eat shit. Of all the Disney cartoons from this era, this is the one that I feel like people make the least amount of fuss about. There aren't any think pieces about it, any fan songs, any memes. It's pronounced Mimi. I feel like a healthy percentage of you, right, sung along to the theme song when I played it earlier, but, like, What's the word beyond that? What else do you remember from this show? What moments do you quote? What characters did you sketch in the margins of your notebooks? See like, okay, I'm gonna put some choices up. See if you can remember which one is her brother's name. If you picked B, you were wrong. 
like everyone else, his fucking name wasn't even on the screen. Do you actually remember the buzz on Maggie? Or do you just remember like the idea of the buzz on Maggie? Do you just like remember that era, how you felt, where you watched it? I'll tell you one thing. I sure do wish I remember it being in fucking, fucking widescreen. Yeah, I was checking to see if they made the black people roaches in this show. Now, when I was little, what made me want to watch the buzz on Maggie in the first place is because I thought it looked really cute. Like, I'ma be real, it just takes me forever to watch something that looks ugly, okay? Why do you think so many people refuse to watch King of the Hill? That shit look a fucking atrocious, okay? Them designs make my skin crawl. And because I thought it was so ugly, it is what put me off from watching it for so many years. And it's actually one of the best adult animated cartoons I've ever seen so yeah back to the bug on Maggie okay now that I'm grown the show is not as cute as I remembered and that's not necessarily a bad thing because when I was little I didn't process the fact that this show was about bugs until years later when it came on at 5 a.m. before Playhouse Disney yeah they used to play this for sure Stanley y'all remember Stanley anyway let's go bugs are gross they eat trash they live in the fucking dump okay this show took something so nasty and they made it cute okay so Maggie's one of those stand up for what's right type of main characters the TJ's the number ones the Sharon Spitz she's really bold kind Confident. You are the flies of tomorrow, yet you are being served the lunch of yesterday. I have a dream that someday- Oh my gosh. They make her really competitive too, which I guess could get old sometimes. There's only but so many times I'm trying to watch a main character learn not to be such a competitive piece of shit before I exit out the tab and throw in an old family guy out of boredom. But I do think they did a decent job creating a likable protagonist. I learned the word protagonist in sixth grade and I haven't looked back since, I swear. But just because Shorty's kind of likable doesn't mean that she's a good person. I ain't even gonna lie, my nigga. Maggie be turning up. It's uh Jessica Dasigo again from Emperor's New School. You know, hottie, hot, hottie. She, she don't wanna, wanna fuck you, nigga, you all nigga. that. And I was still learning how to make videos back then. That sometimes unreliable bar in a theme song couldn't be further from the front. There's this sick ass episode where she's supposed to babysit, but she fucks around and causes a bunch of premature births. What the fuck is this buzz on Maggie shit? What y'all got me watching, son? I love that Maggie's actually a good sister to Pupert. I was ready to watch 21 episodes of her hating being around them or something, but their relationship is solid, OD. Right past me. Yeah. Oh. Wow, working on your trick shots already? Cupy, oh. you are gonna be a star in no time. I have a show now too. Of course, mine's just pretend, but I Yeah, yeah, that's sweet, Pupy. We'll play later. Maggie, but I'm talking about things that are important to me. The shit about Maggie being a stand-up for his right type of character only really works when there's something in it for her. Sometimes I feel like early in the run is for the greater good, but in the second half of these episodes, this motherfucker couldn't be TJ if she tried. I don't know when the turning point is, okay, but at one point she just starts wilding. When the raccoon comes and like Godzilla's they whole town, Maggie wants to stop it, not because of her family, not because of her friends, but because she doesn't want it to fuck up her room. If we can't stop him, at least we can try to detour him to a less destructive path, like say along here. <laughs> Right through the hospital, the petting zoo, and the orphanage? Okay, I know it's not perfect, but... You can't make this shit up. Maggie selfishly gets Aldrin to win a race for her so she can get a scooter right before the big homecoming game. And yeah, he wins, but he fucking beefs it in the process. Maggie shows no remorse for this until everyone hates her for fumbling the bag. What the fuck is wrong with her? He's just a bad kid, that's all. Maggie was a little bitch sometimes, okay? Like, she literally was making fun of her enemy's weight. I'm sorry, no matter how much you don't like somebody, please don't make fun of their weight. Like, literally, Literally in the first ever show, she steals a permanent record to expose Miss Miraculous Ladybug, all because she got to pick the theme for the school dance. Like, Maggie, you done lost your damn mind. Like, she was a horrible person, but like, Maggie, was it that serious? Yes, that girl was terrible, but don't, don't we don't do that, girl. We don't stoop down to people's level. And it's the you know what was so stupid about it? It's because this is a school dance. This literally is not going to matter. But then I calmed down and I had to remember 
she's 13. That's literally one of the worst things that can happen to a 13 year old, like first world problems, all right? Maggie is very extra, okay? She makes shit harder than it should be. And even though Maggie got on my damn nerves all the fucking time, because this entire show's premise is Maggie does something stupid and she ends up paying for it in the end, okay? I'm glad that she didn't really get away with all the fuckery that she was doing. I'm glad that she got punished in the end. It became a bit repetitive because sometimes it was just like, okay, Okay, Maggie, that was stupid. You really could have avoided that. But sometimes she didn't really mean any harm. Even though Maggie got on my nerves, I didn't hate her. I didn't even dislike her. I loved her as a kid because she was so fun and so free spirited. As literally the theme song, I'm just the way I am. I loved the theme song so much because I was so different from all my classmates and I could really relate to it. So when I was younger, I thought I could relate to Maggie a lot by the theme song. But now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, she was not that much like you. She's actually very different. So I loved her as a kid, but as an adult, I still love her for different reasons because yeah, she's a fucking fly, but she felt human, okay? Because you wanna know why? Middle schoolers do the stupidest shit ever, all right? I remember I saw this post on Tumblr. Yes, I still use Tumblr, get on me, I don't care. But somebody was like, people will say, oh my gosh, this character is so fucking annoying. And then the character they are talking about is a 14 year old kid. I hate to break it to you, but like kids that age are annoying y'all, but it's normal. It's normal, okay? Middle schoolers do stupid shit and it's very realistic, okay? Sometimes I don't care for a main character because they can feel too perfect. Like Arnold from Hey Arnold. Like, yeah, he was a neutrally good character. We didn't really see much of his flaws all that much, but I like that Maggie was a dickhead, okay? I loved it, okay? She was mean to her little brother because she cared about him. She pushed her best friend to do things that she didn't want to do because because she wanted her to break out of her comfort zone. And then later on, you ended up seeing how they kind of are both equally as terrible as each other. But moving on, moving on, moving on. But the funniest thing I have noticed about Maggie's character the more I watch the series is that she had this girl that she did not like named Dawn. And basically, she didn't like Dawn because she literally acted just like her, but she was just more popular and more people liked her. That's literally the main reason my Maggie hate her. She saw too much of herself in that girl and was like, oh no, fuck her. She can't get away with that shit. <laughs> Is this guy the real deal or what? I don't know. He's just the type Dawn would get mixed up with. Ha, I wish. <laughs> I think the tone that the buzz on Maggie goes for allows me to be a little bit more open to how bad of a person they make Maggie sometimes. I mean, I've broken this thought process down before, but think of Family Guy, right? I can understand how heartfelt moments can't land for someone when they watch Family Guy because of how the show establishes that these characters treat each other. Analyzing a show like this on the same plane as like The Simpsons is really difficult because the characters treat each other like shit and then we're supposed to think that they care about each other by the end. What? It just doesn't work for some people. The buzz on Maggie isn't sweet though. Like they don't even try to give you these kinds of moments. It puts first that it's just a silly cartoon. Audrin cartoonishly treats Maggie like shit throughout the show. So it's not out of left field that she doesn't care about his depression. There's a consistency, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I usually spend a lot of time on character, but I don't know if I could really do that this time around. The mom is the normal pleasant cartoon mom. The dad is the normal stern yet supportive cartoon dad. The brother's the normal dickhead older brother. Oh yeah? Well, you're on. Great. I love being on. She has the annoying little brother too. This little baby maggot thing that they got here is mad cute. I love this design. I feel like if they made more of these, we could have seen a little bit more dimension, but as it stands, nah. There isn't really much to say here about anyone except Maggie and maybe her best friend, Raina. And if you have any interest in bringing up your math range at all, you'll hurry up and take your seats. You'll need every second you've got. right -oh. Raina is Maggie's best friend. She's kind of just like the supportive black friend trope. Huh? They make her a little more level-headed than Maggie to really balance things out, and I think it works. She only really gets wrapped into whatever Maggie's doing just by 
trying to help the homie out, but she's usually just the voice of reason. They do a lot of stories that have been done in mad other Disney cartoons and live action shows. I think they just haven't really been done with flies before. But who man, does that make a lot of these episodes predictable? That buzz, 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 buzz off Johnny shit only gets you but so far, beloved. And that tone thing uh, I was talking about? Since the show doesn't care about emotional moments too much, that means a lot of these episodes kinda just end without morals or fully concluding their story, it's weird. The one where Pupert and Audrin play fun ball together is bizarre. Because like, you see what it's setting up, right? It's about Maggie protecting Pupert's confidence and helping him beat Audrin at his own game in a game of fun ball, a sport literally invented for bro to win. Maggie sucks all of the fun out of the game for Pupert out of her selfish desire to beat Audrin. And you're just waiting for it, you're just waiting for a moment where like maybe like a parent or something tells Maggie where she fell off at. You were really selfish, the point of fun ball is fun, you know the vibes, but nah, actually, it just kinda just ends. Nobody learns shit. And like why even why even do this story, my nigga? There's a lot of that, bro, I promise you. I just kinda started ignoring it, but man, is it weird. I was talking to uh Hariana about this, and I really think that this show is at its best most fun and innovative when it takes place at the school opposed to the family stuff. I'll bow down, I'll kiss your feet, I'll drink your bath water. Get a light. Damn, my boy. The first episode that I actually caught myself enjoying was the fourth one, and it doesn't even have Maggie's family in it at all. It's the one where Maggie fights to get better school lunches. The lunch lady quits, and the school instead hires everyone's parents. But then they start to overstep their boundaries OD and embarrass all the kids. This shit was fun and pretty much exactly what I was hoping this show would be when I jumped into it. Looks like you was right, pesky. Change is good. Typing, son, they better not be doing bag of hands. What are you doing here? I got beef with this fly right here. You would think a show about an aspiring pop star would have her singing a bit more, but I think it's a good thing it didn't. Because Maggie's lyrics were wild in back in the day. And it almost landed me an ass whooping. Why? Because the only song she performs in the show, a melody that is engraved into my memory, is titled Tony the Great Big Tick. The Great Big Tick. Hey, yo! Tony the Big Big Tick had a nose and he loved a bitch! Repeat that aloud, and it may sound like you're calling something else, Great Big. And my mom did not appreciate hearing that at the dinner table, or outside the bathroom, or in the middle of the dentist's office. I was a dumb kid, but like, this had to be intentional, right? Like, they knew what they were doing. Did they want kids to put on a song that sounds like a huge innuendo? What? <laughs> What does this accomplish? Well, to the genius who wrote that song, it didn't bring me joy. It brought me confusion and a smack upside the head. I'm like seven or eight. I am not aware that Tony the Great Big Tick or Johnny and Plink's Penny Dance sound like no-no words. I just like singing the funny lyrics from the funny cartoon. That being said, though, I still would want to hear a Maggie like EP. Come on, I'm getting some Miley Cyrus vibes. The insect version of Bangers would probably be a banger. <laughs> this is one of those, uh, Shorter shows? Remember when I used to do those? There isn't even an animation glow up, so I can't even do a didn't realize AMV for this one. If you're new to this channel and don't even know what those are, uh, watch these. Speaking of animation though, at first I was not big on how this animation moved. I feel like if the show was given more of a chance to grow, they could have definitely really found their footing in this department, but it does still manage to clean itself up after a few episodes. But man, does this show make up for it by being so damn expressive throughout. There's some great takes, facial expressions, even some nice static poses. It's definitely fun to look at. There's a little of that El Tigre Mucha Lucha to these designs. Flash cartoons from this era all kind of have that specific look, you know? That Jorge 
Gutierrez look. Light be confusing me, collect. Like dog, look at this black exploitation parody. In a world where no dish is clean, <laughs> cleaning up the city one dish at a time. I really wish these episodes existed in higher quality. This shit would look gorgeous. This uh, second Halloween one is especially expressive. They was going viral on this one. The more these episodes go on, the looser these things start to look, which is how it should be. And if you pause that last sentence, you're a fucking weirdo. Aw oh, man, this take is hilarious. It just looks like they just fucking like broke the rig. Some great like character acting. This is a cool looking show. Not yet! I haven't painted the shutters! My nigga, is that fucking Foster's home for imaginary friends? Stop fucking watching these videos with your families, you're gonna get yourselves in trouble. This show came out in 2005, it wasn't even that long ago. To prove to you that it wasn't that long ago, 2005 is only 13 years after the Golden Girls ended, and one of them is even still alive. What? Do these fucking videos take to me? The character design and the clothing design is all fun as shit. You can tell they knew they were really good at this shit too. That's why they keep making Maggie change between two alternating fits during the theme song. They keep drawing Maggie with his cat mouth too. It's adorable. All right, so speaking of the theme song, right? Usually with these kind of shows, I'd expect the theme song to be about the main character's journey or something like that, right? Like a good example is uh, Drake and Josh, right? How the song is saying that in due time, they'll accept and be there for each other. It's gonna take some time to realign, but if you look inside, I'm sure you'll find. Over your shoulder, you know that I told you I'll always be picking you up when you're down. So just turn around. <laughs> And I don't know, I found the buzz on Maggie interesting because since I only remember the intro to this show, I just assumed it was about a young girl learning how to be confident in herself. Like I took these lyrics as kind of like affirmations. I'm fly, I'm original, I'm sly and unpredictable. I'm nearly irresistible and I don't even try. I'm easily excitable, completely undeniable and sometimes unreliable. Don't ask me why. Why? Why? I'm strange and I like it. That's just the way I am. I can't change. I can't hide it. That's just the way I am. Might as well get over it, but don't try to understand. I'm strange and I like it. That's just the way I am. From a whisper. Hey! Ain't nobody trying to hear that bullshit. But Maggie's already confident in who she is. She never feels small or inadequate. So these lyrics aren't affirmations of her journey. They're just kind of like about who she is already. And I think that's interesting, OD. I also smoked before I took these notes, so that might have a little something to do with it. So I've done videos on all the Disney cartoons from this era, and I've come away still liking all of them for better or for worse. Uh the first few episodes of the buzz on maggie made me think that shit was doa i was not feeling this shit at first you know like i i was content you know it's okay if one disney cartoon doesn't age well so many nicktoons don't corny lame boo tomato tomato but once they get maggie out of the house and start doing different kinds of stories I loosened up. This is the other one about the fucking stink bug. Uh, yeah, you know, like he can't help that he smells bad and they try to use it as a way to get you to accept people despite their differences, blase, blase. Man, nah, fuck that. Wash your ass. It ain't that fucking hard, my nigga. Scrub a dub dub, dickhead. Can someone turn off the jets? They're getting a little too strong. What jets? Aw, isn't that cute? She stood up for him and now the stink bug wants to fuck Maggie. It's okay, Lil, bro. Uh, apparently, you're not the only one. Yo, wait a minute. They gave, they gave Maggie the buffs, bro. See, because this, this, this is the shit I'm talking about, right? Why they moving like this, though, bro? Like, it's a it's a bug, though. Oh, oh, this there's shit, the way that I, shit I updated. Like, I just want, like, Butch Hartman drew it. Oh, no! It's a fucking fly, man. Come on. It, it was around here. I was looking at like they <laughs> Like, look, you feel what I'm saying? It keeps going. It keeps going! Bro, but it's a bug though, like. She shit. Can't drink it. <laughs> That's just the way she is, bro. She get <laughs> Well, uh, this is one concert my fans will remember. Oh, what she gonna do? <laughs> what she gonna do? <laughs> 
<laughs> Real talk, if I didn't need these videos to like pay rent, I would make this the thumbnail. You get these like cartoons, right? And it's like, it's shit like, oh, uh, a cute anthropomorphic fly and her black best friend uh, do random shit. And then it's sniggers that's just like, oh damn, let me, uh, so how can I, how can I beat off to this? <laughs> know your meme? What's go- Fly, fly ass! ass. <laughs> what? Oh boy. Man, I can't even fucking- I just saw some crazy shit, where'd it go? Oh, here we go. Yo! <laughs> Yo, they, her arms ain't even black anymore, they just took a whole and liberty. It's, just, it's, it's a fucking bug, man, come on, bruh. Like, <laughs> niggas don't know the buzz, for real. Oh my god! Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> I just think it's funny that niggas really be moving like this. Like, why, though? Yeah, what the? Oh, they drew shit. that. They Man, did that. They wildin'. They knew what they were doing. Man. You know what? Never mind. These characters are sexualized. Man. It's too late. Man. They blow my shit. I'm gonna have to, like, burn my computer after this. <laughs> the second half of the first episode is acting like it's about, like, not being ashamed of who you are and embracing yourself, but... It's kind of about racism. Like, I think this bitch is just a racist. Everything that has to do with, like, being a fly is just, like, so gross to Shorty. She's not fucking with none of it. I thought it was gonna be, like, some Uncle Ruckus self-hate shit and Shorty was just, like, a fly all along, but... Nah. It's just really fucking racist. Choose your fighter like fuck. Ah, PewDiePie wasn't racist, guys. He was just quoting Kanye, you know? What a fucking nigger. I don't mean that in a bad way. You know what? Use the nigger. I don't mean that in no nice way. Oh my god. Damn, okay, uh, they do a Beatles parody. And they're not even fucking Beatles. What the fuck? That's like the first thing you're supposed to do in some shit like this. Y'all think they're gonna show them beating off together? Like in real life? Oh, hey, Ringo. <laughs> Oi Ringo, pass me the Jergens. Yo, my mom's gotta be proud about what I do for a living, yo. Also, what is up with Disney and these damn makeover episodes? Like, every Disney cartoon- No, scratch that shit, scratch that shit. Every Disney show has like a damn makeover episode, okay? The Princess Diaries had one, and that wasn't even a show, that was a fucking movie. The Proud Family, Recess, That's All Raven. They did that shit in Descendants, don't play with me, but yes, they did. And even in the fucking Weekenders, I'm pretty sure there was a makeover episode episode okay and also one funny thing that just really tripped me out about the buzz on maggie is that there's just this one episode it's one of the weaker episodes in my opinion it's a good skip if anybody wants to give this show a watch but there's this one episode where maggie wants to bring home a germ and germs are equivalent to pets in their universe and i was just like uh-uh y'all literally bugs in the same circle do not discriminate against your kind <laughs> The world they invent is pretty cool. They live in like a dumb ball of houses and shit are just discarded human shit. It's dope. Certain characteristics of insects are brought into the characters too. It's like some Bojack shit. Some people keep germs as pets. Some are against it. Not sure what this is a metaphor for. Is this a metaphor? Is this show smart? The episode is called The Usual Insects. That's funny. That's, that's really funny. That's clever. This shit is fucking... Dirty. And it's shit they do with the nocturnal girls where like they're really dull and dry during the day, but litter than a motherfucker at night is really clever. I'm not gonna lie. The shit with these niggas molted though. I don't know. Somebody niggas deserve jail time for animating this. No! I do think it's cool how they incorporate the human world. Sticky feet doesn't allow germs, Maggie. At least not the ones that make humans sick. We flies have a bad enough rap as it is. The humans are always blaming us for spreading germs. It's just plain embarrassing. The show gets a little gross every once in a while, but it's nothing like too insane. It's cute looking, man. I ain't finna throw the fuck up or nothing. Only some of the dialogue makes me want to do that. Mmm, daddy, good to the last glock. Nice. It is the captain's right to take stock of captured booty. No, seriously, hands off my booty! Then there's this sick ass clip of the principal making one of the teachers mad uncomfortable. Our faculty lounge is gonna be jamming! Looks like we'll be watching that big screen TV from a hot tub, baby. Bitch, shoot him! The cast on the Buzz on Maggie 2 is just full of voice actors using voices that they've used somewhere else before. Like, we all know shows like that, son. Snitch! Ooh, ooh, no, no, snitching is for babies. Maggie, it's not about the food. It's about showing how proud we are of you. Congratulations, sis. But if you're a waitress, why are you covered in sawdust? I just can't believe I edited a whole video that looks like this. 
Man, I hate editing with footage like this almost as much as I hate the San Ramo U coffee machine. You okay? That was oddly specific. Yeah, no, don't worry, it's personal. Will this video get the buzz on Maggie on Disney Plus? Look, all I'm saying is if the motherfucker is there now and you're watching this in the future, just know it wasn't there before, you heard? Maybe the next nigga who reviews this will be blessed with better footage. As always, I'll walk so you niggas could run. This, this is over. <laughs> Shit, wow, I made it a whole video without the comment guy. Hey! Whoops. What's up, everyone? It's Kevin here, and today I'm going to comment on Thomas FTW ranting out the buzz on Maggie. The buzz on Maggie? No, more like the buzz on poop. That's disgusting! Was that the best name that you could ever come up with? Huh. Watching and then watching plenty of episodes I never seen because Disney Channel only played the first eight all the damn time. I had a lot of fun. I'm sorry, but I just have to get this out. All I heard was like Lin Lau Jr. from the Lau House every time Maggie spoke. I remember this show being pretty popular when I was in elementary school, and though the show was popular, as a bunch of girls in my class and at my cheerleading gym really enjoyed it, it only had one season. And to be honest, I understand why. The Buzz on Maggie is one of those shows I think personally ran its course. As I did enjoy Maggie as a character and I love watching the misadventures that her and Raina got into, they were the only two who carried this show. And there's only so much that two characters can do. And I was actually sad when I watched the last episode because I was looking forward to seeing what Maggie and Raina would fuck up next. But I understand why Disney cut it. I really couldn't see this show going on any longer unless they made some changes to it. When you're a kid and your favorite show gets canceled, it's like the worst thing ever because I remember when I was little, I was sad when I found out they weren't making any more episodes of The Buzz on Maggie. But as an adult, my mindset has shifted in that shit before it gets terrible and i think the buzz on maggie ended when it needed to some things don't have to go on for long to be great and that's okay whereas descendants had a show in three movies and miraculous ladybug has 100 episodes and two specials and we we don't do that here nah man the buzz on maggie's all right correction this show rocks it's strange but i like it <gasps> I was ready for it to fucking suck because those first few were rough, but once it figures out what it wants to do, it can be fun. There's a history of animated shows and characters just kind of becoming legends. And not like the GOAT kind of legend, everything isn't The Simpsons or King of the Hill, but like urban legends. Or at least with how we associate them in our minds as time goes on. Like, think of like the Flintstones, right? Enough time has passed to where I am 110% positive that there are kids who are currently growing up who only know Fred Flintstone as a serial mascot. And that's kind of like the buzz on Maggie. Enough time has passed that the feeling that this show provokes for everyone comes from people's staple memory of what it is. And for most of us, that's the theme song and the theme song alone. I damn sure couldn't tell you a quote from this shit before I started rewatching. I think that's interesting and I think it's a little troubling, but I also think that it's nice that just like the Flintstones, it has a little more to offer than what people know it for today. So with that said, will I watch the buzz on Maggie again? <laughs> Nigga, fuck no. I ain't even seen As Told by Ginger since. You think I'm gonna watch this buzz buzz shit, man? Fuck you. Man, what a heartless jerk to do that. So leave a like, share, and subscribe. to the moon and let me
play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. Show me big bro. Now the words, please be true.